it's kind of interesting. Kurt Ankerberg is the libertarian candidate. He was uh, nominated by his party sometime after our primary election. Kurt Chancellor made it to the ballot in a different manner. He, uh, I guess you'd call it an initiative, initiative uh, process. He, he received uh, signatures of people, folks who wanted to see him on the ballot. Tanya Morrow was not on as a, as a candidate in the, in the primary election, but she received the um, write-in for the Democratic nomination. And you've met uh, Rick Dyer. He's, he's the um, um, nominee for the Republican Party. Okay, I've got some questions for you folks. Um, there's been a lot of talk about I just mentioned that he must have been out here before. Oh, <laughs> um, there has been a lot of talk about a convention center somewhere, in ja someplace in Jackson County, perhaps even at the Expo. Uh, what is, uh, do you favor such a center, and, and what can you do as a commissioner to promote that? Sorry. Or will you? I'm sorry. Let's start with Mr. Ankerberg, and then we'll just go right across this room. Can you repeat the question again, please? Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about a, uh, an expo, excuse me, a, a convention center at the expo or someplace within Jackson County. As a commissioner, would you favor that? And number two, uh, would you, if you, if you do favor it, how would you work to make, make that happen? Uh, in a short answer, I oppose the, it's public-private, which means the public pays for about 50% of the convention center. And because of that, I oppose it. If the builders of the convention center want to pay for all of it, that's fine. But they want to follow a model that's been used in Medford for the last couple of construction projects. Um, I do live in Medford, and the city of Medford taxpayers were stuck paying for about 50% of Sid DeBoer's um, Lithia Commons. And then the taxpayers paid for roughly two-thirds of the price of the One West Main Building in, in Evergreen and A Street. Uh, so I think that public-private partnerships do not benefit the public one bit. What they do do is they transfer wealth from the citizens to the rich guys in town. Um, what the city of Medford did is they had $30 million of their money, of your tax money, in their coffers. They gave that money to Sid DeBoer and to Brian McLemore at Pacific Retirement Services. Then immediately afterwards, they decided they needed a new police station and new fire stations, and they raised the taxes for Medford citizens, uh, $30 million that we're going to face here in, in November. And they did that without allowing us to even vote on a police station or fire station. So basically, I oppose it. Um, I oppose the public private partnerships. They're corrupt. Mr. Chancellor, same question. I couldn't agree. Can you hear him? Yeah. I couldn't agree more with what Mr. Hickman said. I, I think that uh, the good of voice system, if they, uh, they want a center, then they need to build it. The taxpayers have paid for enough for the good of voice, and they don't need to pay anymore. Thank you. Um, I believe in uh, public and private partnership for such purpose. Um, a convention center could assist us in um, bringing new business, new, new energy, new ideas to the community. As a commissioner, there are many ways that, that we can support that process. And it can be um, the dedication of some resources, maybe, maybe it's some funds that can help uh, the private sector leverage, um, or, or the nonprofit se sector leverage. Maybe it's just some staff time for, for project management purposes, for planning of such a, such a facility. And ultimately, it could just be um, the county acting as a champion. Um, to, to spread the word and do the PR and do the advocacy that will be necessary in order to get such a project together. Can everybody hear her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this the one I have to eat? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, let, let, me, let me remind you candidates again that uh, Richard here is keeping time. When you see the yellow card, you have 30 seconds to finish. The red card means you're done. So, your, your turn. Well, I believe one of the responsibilities, one of the important responsibilities of our county commissioners is to spur economic development. And Medford and the Rogue Valley, as a regional hub, we have a, an attribute that we should um, encourage using uh, to benefit our local economy. Uh, I think a, a convention center would, would definitely bring in, obviously, conventions, bring in um, all sorts of, of 
people into the community that have an economic impact. Uh, and again, our, our region right now, we need that. Uh, we have been stagnant when other areas have been uh, moving forward and growing. Uh, and I think, I think it's incumbent on the uh, commissioners to take an active role. Uh, and I'm not talking about investing a lot of resources, but definitely investing their time and efforts into developing programs like this. And I think a convention center uh, is something that would be used uh, tremendously. Uh, and again, will have an, an excellent uh, and positive impact on our local economy. So I would support, uh, again, within reason. I, I don't want the county to pay for the, the entire bill uh, by any means, but again, I would support it uh, in a way that's reasonable and responsible to do as a county commissioner. Thank you. I think we're getting our sound a little better now. I think, uh, can you hear better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to talk straight into a microphone. Okay. For that too? Everybody. Everybody, okay. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta I, I got mine. Mine's back. You can't talk over around it. That's what we're doing. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chancellor, we're going to start with you on this round. Uh, the statewide measure allowing legalized recreational marijuana may pass, I think, as you realized during this uh, general election. Um, number one, do you favor passage of that initiative? And number two, what is that going to mean as far as Jackson County and specifically your role as a county commissioner? Well, I... I'm hesitant uh, in some ways to say no, but uh, no, I don't agree. I uh, do not want uh, marijuana legalized. I think that uh, we've got enough trouble in this county with a lot of different issues, and we sure don't need to add another one. We don't add, need to add the burden to the courts. We don't need to add the burden to law enforcement. Um, medical marijuana is another thing. I'm, I have no problem with that but uh, I'm not for legalizing marijuana. I just think that it adds too much of a burden on the taxpayer for too many issues that are gonna come up, unseen issues at this point. Thank you. Okay, let me remind you again, uh, Liam, our, our tech man here, just said speak directly into your microphone so that uh, you, your, your voice is broadcast out there. Tanya, same question. Thank you. Um, I have some concerns about um, our passage of um, recreational marijuana, but I, I come at it from two different views. Um, and I'll start with the first one, and that is, is I've been serving on the on-track uh, board for eight years. So I'm familiar with the addiction issues, um, some of the you know, criminality kind of issues that we're going to have to face. I, I do believe it will probably pass, so we are going to need to face that. I'm going to come back to that because you also asked what our role as a commissioner will be in that. But on the, on the other side of that coin is my, my work over the last 24 years as a lawyer and the last good portion of that as a criminal, federal criminal defense lawyer. And I can tell you that the prohibition, the war on drugs, has not benefited our community. It has not worked. We have, we have just built a, an incredible prison um, culture and prison industrial sector, and we, we've put people in jail in the federal courts for 10 years for just, um, just um, tending marijuana plants. So it's not working, and so th there's always been a black market, there always will be, as long as we understand that this is a public welfare uh, crime, and if the public is saying it doesn't, it, it wants it, then we need, we, we need to just address the issues that will come with it, just like we do with alcohol. Um, and as a, as a commissioner, we're going to have to really focus on those health and safety issues. And we're going to have to make sure we've got, we've got money going into addiction treatment, we've got money going, or we've got, we're supporting drug courts and, and those kinds of things. And I think, I think we'll be fine. Thank you. Okay. Well, I don't necessarily uh, advocate the passage of it, but I think as commissioners, we need to be proactive uh, in the case that it does pass. And we need to look at, currently, uh, under the medical marijuana system, there's, there's loopholes and there's abuses. Uh, that allow marijuana to be readily available to kids. Uh, there's drug cartels that are that are profiting and causing all kinds of other problems, obviously, in our area. And these are these are things that if we do have new legislation, uh, we can close these loopholes. 
and we make sure that the, these drugs are staying out of the hands of kids. Right now, uh, anecdotally, I hear that uh, marijuana is easier for kids to get a hold of than, than alcohol, and that's why so many kids are smoking marijuana now. Um, I think we and the commissioners have been working on a taxing structure that will allow us to, to utilize uh, the sale of marijuana to do things, again, uh, education programs to keep kids off of it in, in the first place, rehabilitation programs to make people who do have addictions, whether it be marijuana or heroin, there's a, there's a lot of drug problems, rehabilitate these people to become more functioning uh, members of society, contributing members of our community. Um, also, uh, I think, you know, as far as the uh, law enforcement goes, I think the, the time and the resources that it takes to, to uh, currently enforce these laws then can be better used to enforce and, and again pursue the violent crimes that are happening right now and the property crimes that are wreaking havoc uh, more so than I think the casual user is. Uh, although I'm not going to discount that problem. There's also potentially problems with, with increased use. If it becomes legal, that's something we need to be aware of. Uh, and of course the societal issues that come along with that. But I think again, proactively we need to look at if it is passed, how can we benefit, how can we make the county uh, better and safer uh, under those, uh, under the new legislation. Mr. Hankerberg, can you repeat the question please, Ralph? Uh, yes, the, uh, the statewide ballot measure on the legal use of recreational marijuana appears that may be passing this claim. So um, my, my question is, what uh, do you favor such passage? and? Uh, what do you foresee as a commissioner of the problems or the benefits to the county of such passage? Uh, first of all, I do favor legalization of marijuana. I think that, as Morrow, Ms. Morrow said, the war on drugs, particularly marijuana, is a, a failure. We're spending a lot of resources to fight marijuana, which is really less harmful than alcohol. And we could use those resources to fight violent crime. Now, there already is legalized marijuana here in Oregon because of the Medical Marijuana Act. Pretty much anybody can get marijuana if you want. It's pretty easy to get. And if you get busted with it, the biggest fine is a $100 ticket. So really, it's already legal. Um, I would hope that the OL, OL um, see the labor, or the, pardon me, the liquor, the liquor control board would uh, take control of marijuana sales and properly regulate it and tax it. Um, we've seen that a lot of cities are trying to jump on board now. First, they were against marijuana, and now they're jumping on board and want to tax it because money, that's all they really care about. They don't care about the issue, they want the money. Um, but the state, with this measure, they already addressed the taxation of it. If you tax it too much, it's not going to get rid of the black market, and that's part of the reason for legalizing it, is to get rid of the black market, get rid of the criminal element of it, and to make some revenue off it so you can use it for treatment and that. Um, this, I want to bless my train of thought here. Um, that's my train of thought, so I'm going to hit it right there. But I, I, I support legalizing marijuana, not for children. I don't think anybody wants to give it to kids. But uh, well, I was going to say about, about marijuana, they call it medical marijuana, but it's not being prescribed through a pharmacy. Basically what you have is some guy in his backyard who's able to grow six plants in his backyard for each patient he gets. The patient only uses one, one ounce of the marijuana and about 80% uh, of the marijuana is free to be distributed among the uh, free market. And that's what's happening right now with the medical marijuana system is there's a whole lot of excess this unaccounted for. Anyway, that's the end of my question. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tanya, what's your uh, position on education, specifically educational funding? Uh, how can how can you, as a county commissioner, um, sort of enhance the uh, you know because we're always talking about more money for education, and uh, how can how as a county commissioner can you um, can you see a way to enhance that funding? That's been a, a, a big problem of ours at the state level for years and years and years, as we know. Um, and funding for higher education at K through 12 has been a focus, or not so much of a focus, as it has needed to be at the state 
legislature. That's where we're going to find the real fix and and what the right policy is there. Um, I, I really can't say because um, what I want to what I want to focus on is the job of the county commissioner. So there's a you know. That issue needs to be vetted, needs, we need to have committee meetings at the state level, and for those decision makers, they'll have to, to um, pursue the research and make those policy choices. What I see as a commissioner we can do, however, is um, we can really, again, work with, as a, a public partner with our higher education institutions. Why I'm running is for purposes of um, focusing on economic development. I think we've um, spent some, some efforts over the last several years just working on management efficiency, which is great, but we need to do more than just management efficiency. So what the county can do is to, to fund um, great organizations like So Ready, who have partnerships with RCC, they go out to our community, make sure our employers um, have the right workforce and the right skills of the workforce available to them. And if not, we go and we talk to RCC, we go and we talk to Southern Oregon University. So that's the kind of thing that the county can do with regard to education. K through 12 and some of the, the bigger issues for higher education is going to have to be solved at the state level, but we can certainly support whatever efforts there are and, and influence through partnerships with our higher education institutions to help uh, build the economy in our community. Thanks. Well, I think we need to, for one, demand accountability. We need to, we need to demand efficiency and effectiveness um, and we need to follow through with that. Um, also, I think that the teachers that I talk to and everybody in education has the same goals. They want to do the best we can for our kids and, and, and that is evident in every teacher that I've ever talked to. Uh, but we need to give them the tools to be able to do it effectively. They're, they're handcuffed, uh, there's bureaucracy, uh, there's a lot of things that stand in the way of them being able to effectively educate our kids. Uh, we need to remove those barriers. And I think also we uh, need to encourage charter schools, um, things that, that again bring a little of the element of, uh, of competition, I guess, in there. So that, that effectiveness and efficiency does have a standard to be measured against. Um, and again, I know at the, at the county commissioner level, we don't have a lot of authority, we don't have a lot of autonomy to, to, to do things uh, directly, but we can influence uh, what happens and we can advocate for the things that we believe in. And I think those are things uh, that I would stand for. And that goes for, for any government agency. Uh, we need to make sure we demand efficiency, and we demand effectiveness, and we demand the right results. And we hold those accountable that, that aren't reaching those. Thank you. More than any other candidate up here, I have a heavy involvement with the Medford School District. I've run for the Medford School District twice. I spent an entire year, two years ago, tutoring uh, at the Medford School District. I taught two algebra classes pro bono twice a week for an entire year at McLaughlin Middle School. So I know what's inside there. I know the administrators of Medford School District. Right now, they're receiving about $10,000 per student per year, which is plenty of money. The problem with the, the school district, the major problem is the teachers union controls the school board and the candidates. And whenever they get any money, the teachers make sure they're first in line to get paid. Now, the Medford School District, for quite a few years, they've had only 170 days of classroom school days. That's 170 days, and coincidentally, that is the minimum number of school days that the state will allow you to have in order to be accredited. So the Medford School District has cut it to the very bone as far as the number of days they have. Now, they've blown a lot of money on nonsense. They blew money on uh, a remodel of the school district. Um, all the administrators of the Medford School District, whenever they retire, it's kind of like the judges, they're corrupt. And the school district administrators are corrupt too. When they retire, they all retire in October. They immediately go into their purse pension in October. And then for the next six or seven months, they go on a special contract so they can double dip. And as you know, Phil Long was removed as the superintendent last year because he condoned that kind of practice of double dipping and wasting your money. So there's a lot of money out there to be used. Uh, the teachers union uh, doesn't represent you. The quality of teachers we have in the Medford School District are pretty poor. They're at the bottom of the barrel academically of what you would hire. Um, we can do a whole lot more than what we're doing. As for SOU, it's an absolute failure as a college. And until we re totally reform it,
Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, same question. You know, I've been married to a school teacher for 43 years. She retired from Rome Community College. And, uh, you know, I've listened to her and to a lot of her friends for 40 some years talk about what's wrong with our schools. And so much of it is uh, mismanagement. Uh, you have superintendents uh, that are so political, and the system is so political, that it's hard to get anything done. Then you have the teachers' unions. They've got you locked down, and the main thing that every teacher that I've ever known wanted to do was teach. But they spent so many times, so much time, filling out papers, going to meetings, and uh, being involved in so many other things and duties that there's no time to teach. Uh, now, just from the outside looking in, uh, if it was a business I was looking in, the first thing I would do is figure out how to shut it down for about 90 days go in and clean it up from top to bottom. But unfortunately, a commissioner does not have that authority, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, thank you for your uh, answers there. Uh, By the way, sorry. one other thing that uh, I wanted to say on the legaliz legalization of marijuana, the one thing that everybody's forgot, right now it's illegal, and children are getting it, and they're getting it at home. When it's legalized, it's going to be in every home that wants it there. And I think it's going to open up a whole bag of children being involved in drugs that were not involved in drugs before. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we're going to let you wrap up a couple of minutes each. And we'll start with you, Rick, and then we'll go to Mr. Ankenberg, Chancellor, and Tommy, you can finish up. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm running for Jackson County Commission because I, I have a passion for this county. I don't have an agenda, a specific agenda. All I have is a, is a desire to do what's best for the county. I've lived here almost 40 years. I tend to be here the rest of my life. I have a 10-year-old son that doesn't attend public school here. I, I own a business here, and this is where I, I met and married my wife. This is my home. Uh, and selfishly, too, I'd like to, to make sure, or do what I can, to ensure that my son, when he gets to the age and, and decides if he wants to stay here, has that option and is able to find good family wage employment, a uh, safe place to raise a family, and I'm a little bit concerned about uh, the prospects of that right now. I think I do have a unique skill set, uh, education and background that will make me an effective commissioner. I have 25 years in business, uh, 15 of which I ran car dealerships where I, where I managed 50 to 75 employees, multi-million dollar budgets, multiple departments, and the day-to-day -day operating uh, and policy decisions of a large local business. Uh, the last six years, I've been successfully uh, running my, my own business, a construction company, and believe me, the last six years in construction, it took some doing to, to remain profitable and successful. Uh, my, my educational background, uh, I have a business uh, a degree from, from Southern Oregon University in Business Administration and Accounting, and in 2007, I decided I wanted to go back to law school. So while I was running my business, volunteering as the Road Valley Transportation District Board of Directors, uh, coaching my son's teams, volunteering in the classroom. I also put in about 25 to 30 hours a week studying, taking tests, writing essays. Long story short, four years later, I graduated in the top third of my class and passed the most difficult bar exam on my first attempt. So I have the ability to take on complex tasks, set difficult goals and achieve them. And I think this county, what we need is somebody with that kind of background and preparedness to be able to take on the challenges that we're going to have, and I think I'm that person. Thank you. Mr. Ankerberg. My name is Kurt Ankerberg. I'm a certified public accountant. I'm licensed in Oregon, and I've also previously been licensed as CPA in California and in Washington State. And I have 30 years experience as a financial auditor, a senior tax manager, a chief financial officer, and for the last 10 years, I've owned my own CPA practice. Now it's important because the primary job of the commissioner is to do the planning, formation, and implementation of the county budget. The county budget is $300 million a year. The county manages 900 employees. I'm the only, the only candidate with a financial background. I've worked at and managed two of the 10 largest CPA firms in the United States. I've had thousands of business clients, as you can imagine. I worked at big, big CPA firms with big clients. I've had small mom and pop businesses, so I understand that but also dealt with large, multi-billion dollar corporations, and that's what the county is. The county's a $300 million business, 
is not your local 7-Eleven. So I have experience doing complex issues that my other opponents don't. Um, as a CPA, I've represented my clients before the IRS, different state departments of revenue, different counties. I've experienced at all levels of government fighting for my clients. Um, bottom line is the commissioners are the financial managers of the county. I'm the only candidate, remember that word only, Rick Dyer sold cars for 20 years, and he installed windows for the last five years. His law, degrees in, his law degree is from a private company that's not even a credit Oregon, so he cannot ever, ever, ever be an attorney in Oregon. He has no practice, no experience being an attorney either. Um, again, none of my clients have financial experience like I do, and I think I'm the, by far the most qualified candidate. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor? Well, I'm... Uh... I've been a businessman for 45 years uh, in the community, uh, Kurt Chancellor of Transmission. I recognize a lot of faces that I've worked on your cars. I've also been a reporter for the U.S. Observer for 13 years. In that time, I've got 77 published articles on the Constitution, on administrative rule, and on the law. I've been self-educated in all of those things. We have also uh, written several articles about uh, Jackson County, the government. Some of our investigations led to uh, some pretty high-ranking officials in Jackson County fading off into the sunset, like the head of community justice, uh, Bob Grindstaff, was forced into retirement, like um, the head of the county road department, the head of parks and recreation, the head of uh, planning department, all put out to pasture because of what we caught them doing as an investigative report. I've been trying to bring criminal charges against the commissioners now and the ones passed through the attorney general's office and through the district attorney's office from malfeasance of office. I'm running for no other reason than to protect you from these guys. These guys here, we've got three lawyers already down there. We don't need two more. If you need, uh, if you need bookkeepers, we got lots of bookkeepers. What you need is somebody that knows where all the bodies are buried. And I do. Tanya <laughs> <laughs> Morrow. Uh, thank you all for coming out and for the opportunity to address you tonight. I I'm in this race because I believe we have much work to do to uh, be able to keep our kids and our grandkids uh, here in our community. We, we need to to invigorate this community so that they not only want to, but they can stay here and thrive in Jackson County. And so I have an agenda. I, I want to work on economic development and community development. And I'm eager to do that work. I am uh, able and ready to apply the same de uh, dedicated work ethic that I have to the job, jo to, excuse me, to the job of representing the county that I have in my 24 plus years of practicing law in both the state and municipal arenas, as well as before the federal bar for the last 12 or 15 years. During um, those years, I've worked diligently and demonstrated the courage and the skills to think critically um, and creatively and to stand up and argue the cause. And that's the kind of leadership we need right now. I have also, during those 24 years on a daily basis, exercised ethical and fiduciary duties to those that I've served. Much of the commissioner's work is about setting policy and applying policy, and by definition, that involves the application of laws, regulations, judicial interpretations, and constitutional limitations. And with my experience, I'll be able to hit the ground running so that I can get out into the community to listen to you, to make sure that we're being responsible and meeting the needs of the community. You have a choice to make. If you want just the status quo, you have that choice, it's not me. If you want just to focus on, on management efficiency, you have that choice, that's not me. I want to do more than that. If you want to see the squeezing of our essential governmental services that we built because of a thought of a, an idea that government's the problem, that's also not me. What you want is, is me as the choice for uh, moving our community and our economy forward and for a vision of our community where we each individually do better when we all do better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, candidates, for, uh, for being here tonight. Thank you for your